Hello, investors and traders, and welcome to the Weekly Market Report. I'm A.J. Monty, and this is a one-year daily candle chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, ticker symbol DIA. I am recording this now from Las Vegas, Nevada, where we're having our 2021 trading conference with Market Rebellion, and it is absolutely an action-packed crowd with all kinds of speakers. Tony Dwyer is coming up next, and then I'll be doing my final presentation of the day. For those of you that have had a chance to watch this online, get ready, the best is yet to come. And with that, I'm gonna go right into the analysis here. As you can see, the forecast lines from last week were hit precisely, and right there, the end of the line for the diamonds was 342. Not only did we hit that, but we surpassed that. Now, what does that mean for next week? Well, as I erase all these lines, now that we've hit the target, you can see that we are right at a new support level down here, right around 338. And so you have to look at the oscillators as they're starting to pivot up. We have a slight buy signal on the CCI down here and you have a bullish Harami right there as I magnify that. That's a bullish Harami on lower volume. Remember, if you're following my trading checklist, we look at the type of candle first, we look at the volume, we look at the divergence from the moving average, which now is still quite wide, and then we look at the oscillators. Finally, we do look for gaps above the market, and lo and behold, we do have a gap above the market on the diamonds. Whether or not we'll go up to fill that gap, we'll have to see, but that is exactly where I'm placing my price target. In fact, I'll be a little bit more conservative and say, okay, we're going to hit that moving average on its way to fill that gap. So next week, I'm forecasting the diamonds will bounce Monday, Tuesday, possibly into Wednesday. Price target there, 346. 45 you can see right there in the data box the end at 346 45 now with that let's take a look at the spiders stick a symbol spy this is the s p 500 etf again targets were hit precisely remember we called the top not too long ago on this where now the moving average see as this is turning down that moving average is going to act as resistance so today, again, we have a bullish Harami on slightly lower volume. Same scenario as the diamonds, gap above the market, going to race all lines again now that the targets have been hit, and I'm going to forecast up to that gap area. That upside price target for SPY is 440.35. So for those of you that have some of the condors or some of the butterfly spreads that we have on this, hold tight. The best is yet to come because once that moving average is hit, it's most likely going to turn around and act as resistance. So I do think later in the week, next week, and into the following week, I think we're going to see more active traders, more swing traders selling into the rallies. Now, with that said, I'm going to hop right to the VIX. For the most part, as you know, the VIX is inversely related to the S&P, and that target was hit again. So we're hitting these targets left and right week after week. It's one of those rare times where we're hitting right on the numbers, and all markets are hitting those targets. But look at the bearish engulfing candle right here. We see that forming on the VIX with a gap below the market. So now that that target has been reached, we're focusing on this gap below the market at which time once that VIX fills that gap, that gap fill point is going to act as a support level. So again, next week, I'm thinking higher, Monday, Tuesday, possibly Wednesday, I would then look for possible profit taking in the S&P and some of the other major markets. But again, keep an eye on that because that gap fill point on the VIX is going to act as a support level. And I use that as a leading indicator, and a lot of our option members do the same. So that's the VIX. If we take a look at the Qs, obviously it's going to be a little bit different than what we've seen. Again, targets were hit from last week precisely. Precisely. We have a bullish engulfing candle right there as we close on Friday. That's the second most bullish candle you're going to find on slightly lower volume with the oscillators turning up, just barely missing buy signals there. But again, as those targets are hit, I'll erase those lines, draw new targets for you. I do think we're going to see a bounce Monday and Tuesday again, same repetition as the other markets that I've mentioned. The S&P price target for next week, I think, is going to hit 366.91 at which time keep a close eye on that volume because if we see the volume drifting off as we reach that resistance point up here at the moving average, you could again see some profit taking 
on the Qs. Now, finally, if we look at IWM, we had a top called on that a while back. Those of you following know that my breakout point to the downside that we're keeping an eye on is 210. A break below 210 is going to get our option traders out of any positive delta positions. We're going to go completely negative delta. We're going to be putting more put spreads on. We have a good opportunity here to trade the range while the Russell is in that range. We have not hit the downside target on that, and I think we're going to have to put that one on hold for a little while because you can see the oscillates down here, especially the CCI, crossing over that momentum line. So that momentum line crossing to the upside could give us two to four days of upside potential on the Russell, just like many stocks that cross that, that zero line or the momentum line. We usually get about two to four days. Don't quote me on that as an exact timeline. But again, I would not be shaken out of any long positions at this point, and I wouldn't be opposed to any long positions as long as you keep your stops below these lows. Now, finally, Ethereum, I've been commenting on this from time to time. I am trading it. I'm not a full-fledged investor here. However, if you look at Ethereum, it is following the technicals quite nicely. We're at the moving average, but look, we close over that 20-period moving average with all oscillators pointing up. So we have a resistance point up here right around 35. I would trail your stops up to that point. I'm setting it as a price target, and from there, we'll see whether or not it'll pull back from resistance, and you can trail your stops from there. So again, thank you so much for those especially attending the Las Vegas event. I'm looking forward to continued education through our online channels. Keep your stops in place. Keep your eyes focused on the charts, and you have a good rest of the week. So long.